So thanks for joining us, Joe. I thought I'd just start off by asking you a bit about how you became involved in procurement. Well, I didn't even know it was procurement then, Jen. Um, the organisation I was working for many decades ago now, sadly, uh, was, uh, had established a contract for uh, travel, air travel, mm-hmm. and they just handed it across to my area to look after, and it was uh, given to me. So. I had to help implement that contract Mm -hmm. and then it evolved from there. I established the travel coordinators across the organisation and then we decided that we needed to do something with accommodation and and it was a little while after that that somebody joined the organisation as a professional procurement officer Mm -hmm. um, and then formed their team and then we we set up category um, functions and and everything like Mm -hmm. that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And can you just give a bit of background as well in your journey through procurement and the roles you've taken on as you progress through your career? Yes. Well, I guess it, that was in the private sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, was, we were there for, for quite a while, um, establishing the procurement function, uh, establishing category management, um, mm-hmm. particularly supplier relationship management mm-hmm. and KPIs with those organisations. So that was where I had the opportunity to do a really steep learning curve. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a great CPO and uh, and he was uh, what we called the, the university of procurement. Right. <laughs> and he allowed us to go to lots of training and yep. get started because uh, really none of us had a, a big mm. procurement background back mm-hmm. then anyway. Um, from there, I moved on to the public sector. So mm-hmm. uh, I worked for New South Wales Procurement in the centre. Mm-hmm. Uh, learned a lot there as well and then moved across to the Department of Education mm-hmm. and um, we established the, the formal procurement function there mm-hmm. as well at that stage and um, and ultimately I ended up becoming the CPO on merit at that organisation. So. It sounds like a fast journey, but that took many years. Yeah. <laughs> and over the different organisations you've worked with, what are some of the key challenges you've seen that are faced by the procurement function across those organisations? I guess typically uh, it would be a, a lack of understanding of mm-hmm. what procurement is and, and needs to do. And mm-hmm. I think that's not necessarily on the organisation's um, side of things. I think that's mm-hmm. very much up to the procurement professionals to be mm-hmm. able to work closely with the stakeholders and explain what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so you often see that uh, the lack of understanding means that they feel it's going to be too hard, mm-hmm. um, uh, they feel that procurement gets in the way mm-hmm. um, quite often because there needs to be processes and they don't understand what those processes are for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the people are going around the, the, the process, mm-hmm. around the contracts around the functions mm-hmm. um, and therefore you tend to lose a bit of credibility with your suppliers mm, if, right. you, if you can't get that um, compliance with, with the contracts mm-hmm. that you put in place. But it really does start with, with those relationships. Now that's internally to the organisation. Mm-hmm. There are of course many other issues that come up for procurement, whether it's um, based on probity issues, fraudulent mm-hmm. activity, things that are happening in the marketplace, mm-hmm. things that happen um, globally that impact supply. Mm. The, the list could go on and on and on. That, that, that's a really big question. Mm. <laughs> and have you observed any changes across your career in what's expected of procurement prof- professionals and the procurement function in organisations and the way procurement's been carried out over time? Uh, definitely. Um, I, I think procurement is such a has such a long history. I mean, mm-hmm. you can go back through history and find that you know, even from the very first stores that you know, from the very first yep. ships that arrived mm-hmm. here. In, <laughs> um, and but the, typically, the, the functions have always been the same mm-hmm. to be able to provide the equipment needed to, yep. to um, ensure that the organisation or the function that you've got there is sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the, re- the expectations on the procurement function, that, that is evolving mm-hmm. um, and moving from very much probity-based and, and um, moving towards um, automating things very much mm-hmm. uh, towards the need, the much bigger need for, for relationship management mm-hmm. um, and, and support of the organisation and now very much into sustainability mm-hmm. and, um, you know, people, planet, you know, the environment, all, all of those things that are so important. There was a time... Um, and some, only some decades ago where it was said that the only thing that an organisation needs to focus on is profit. Mm. Uh, we now know that mm-hmm. that was in fact fraught with, with many, many issues. Mm. Um, and so it is not the only thing that, that organisations need to look at. 
so it's not all about savings anymore, which mm. used to be the the main factor for procurement. Mm. Now it's it's very much about supporting that the environment, as I said, but um, you know, and also the organisation's reputation. They need to be looking at this. Their shareholders, their staff, want them to be looking at uh, more than yeah, just much more yeah. than just the dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and as you've just noted throughout your procurement career you've been a strong advocate for sustainable procurement is there anything you've observed in how organizations have developed this an increasing area of focus and how they've implemented it and maybe some ways it's been done well and maybe where it's more working towards being done well oh look yes i think there's um definitely areas of excellence in Mm -hmm. different environments and different industries too probably that are are much more mature Mm -hmm. um but it's it's right across the spectrum. There are still many, many organisations and procurement professionals as well that don't yet have a full understanding of what sustainability is and could be and could mm-hmm. do for their organisations. Um, I don't know that I could probably give you any specific examples right now, mm-hmm. um, but suffice to say that knowing, having done some, some um, research myself, mm-hmm. um, the public sector is focused on a number of areas that you would call sustainability, and that's mm-hmm. because obviously they're looking at um, areas of uh, economical mm-hmm. um, sustainability itself, mm-hmm. um, but also looking after the people side of things. Mm-hmm. So when you look at um, ensuring that small businesses are being supported, diverse businesses, yes. Aboriginal yep. businesses, etc., the mm-hmm. public sector is much more focused generally um, yes. on, on balance yep. than than private, but then I think um, the private sector has got a lot of um, very good initiatives that have, that they've done, particularly in respect to the environmental side of things, and mm-hmm. now looking more at the, at the supply diversity. So um, I'm heartened to see that there's there's a lot of improvement and a lot mm-hmm. of focus. Um, I do think there's a long way to go though. Yeah, and with um, the impact of reforms like the Modern Slavery Act and the ISO 2400 Sustainable Procurement Standard. What do you see as the impact of these new focus areas and reforms on procurement functions in Australia? Well, I think from a procurement function, it's um, it's going to be an area that, they, that, regardless of whether they want to or not, it's something that's, that they're really going to have to focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know that anyone's got... A real oh, handle do, yeah. on that, right? People <laughs> yep. are going to to great lengths to, mm-hmm. to get there, um, and but in terms of where that's going to take them in the longer term, I'm, I'm really interested to see. Um, yes, there's depending on the industries and, and everything else. There's um, a lot of people looking through their supply chains and doing some great things at the mm-hmm. moment, um, uh, but I'm I'm not sure that's from the modern slavery side. Uh, I, I can see that it's going to be really, really complex mm. because it's so hard to be able to get through to every component of mm. a particular product, for example. Mm-hmm. There's so much that will make that up and to get mm. to the end of it, it's, it's really going to be difficult. So I think technology is going to have to play a very big part in yes. that um, and, and that hopefully uh, industries and suppliers and everything will come together so that... Um, you know, a supplier is not going to have to do the same thing a thousand times to be able to, mm-hmm. to comply with with all of their customers and their suppliers, etc. It's it can be a, a true minefield. Um, so that's the the modern slavery side, the the sustainable procurement side. I mean, very um, professional procurement probably has had a lot of sustainable mm-hmm. elements in there anyway, mm-hmm. because some of that under the ISO twenty four hundred uh, includes you know fair trading and being fair with suppliers and transparent with your suppliers and doing the honest and open thing and, and so most procurement professionals will have been doing that for a long time mm-hmm. but there's a lot of really great things in that ISO 2400 that can be adopted throughout the procurement process that's going to make a huge difference to to organisations and the, and the planet so I, I think it'll be good if, if everyone can get quite involved in, in implementing all of those elements, it'll be great. Yeah. And as a leader in the procurement profession, what are some of the key skills and attributes you'd say are are ideal for the profession and someone coming into the profession? Uh, That's a a good question because I did ask somebody recently about what they felt the procurement profession needed to focus Mm -hmm. on. Um, And they said that they had recently done a big recruitment Mm -hmm. and they found that a lot of the people that were applying for the jobs were technically great. So in terms of understanding what procurement's about, how they mm. go about it, 
um, all of the probity and process mm -hmm. requirements. Um, they know all of that really, really mm. well. Um, but what they were observing, this individual that I spoke to, um, was that they're starting to get more and more into automation. Right. And as yep. that happens, then a lot of those technical areas are going to be mm, covered by, the, yep. by, te by technology. Mm. And therefore, what people need to be focusing on is the strategic areas, yes. um, being innovative, but very much about relationship management and mm. about um, the soft skills. So they're the things that they're probably going to need to focus on. So there's the two areas. One is about where is, is procurement going from a technical perspective or the digital side of things. That, so, so that's one area they can be focusing on because mm -hmm. that needs to be supported. Mm -hmm. um, and the other side is um, how can I better in, improve relationships? Um, I was at an event just recently and an individual said, oh, now that we're putting all this technology between us and the supplier, we're finding that we're losing touch. Mm. And the response was was interesting to say, no, the technology is going in there so that you can have more time. More focus on the relationship. focus on your relationship. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I thought that yeah. really hit the nail Interesting comment, there. yeah. Mm. And do you have any, just as a final comment, any advice to someone who's looking to get into the procurement profession at the moment or maybe any comments as well about where you see procurement going in the future? Um, yeah, look, I just think anybody that's interested in procurement is really, really smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, no, I, I think um, procurement is such an exciting and dynamic area because you get to work across the entire breadth of an organisation. Yep. Very few can. Um, and so... Yeah, Anybody that's, that's sort of coming into it with a particular skill, mm -hmm. uh, particular interest, like um, particular category, engineering, yep. finance, all of those things, mm. there's, there's a place for all of those yeah. people. But equally so, there's a place for anybody that really just wants to work with um, people mm -hmm. uh, and develop those sorts of relationships. Mm. Um, yes, you do need to be able to understand and work with contracts, but if, you know, if you've gone through through school yep. um, and or university or anything like that, you can you handle pick it. Yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, so when when um, I was working with education, we uh, had a cadet and a graduate program. Mm -hmm. So um, we had one person come straight out of the HSC. Yes. Um, they coped extremely well, you know. Mm -hmm. we, and, and others that have come out of straight out of university and, and etc. Mm -hmm. So we had a range of people come come in. Um, but yes, if you're willing to apply yourself, mm -hmm. learn, just absorb, be a sponge, learn everything. Yeah. Um, and and apply yourself, and you can you can definitely go a long way in procurement. Where is it going to the future? I think it it will be very much about um, relationship development, mm -hmm. being innovative, getting involved in in things that are going to not just support and and take your organisation to you know beyond where it feels that it can go at the mm -hmm. moment, but getting quite innovative about um, the, the products and and the technology that yes. is going to support. Mm. You know the, the planet. Um, yeah. You know, um, no longer building and, and, and specifying things with lots and lots of plastics and, mm. and things, but understanding, you know, if you do, how you can reuse and reuse yeah. that so that you get into circular economy and yeah. and not just um, you know putting everything through the landfill. So you, there's going to be a much more holistic consideration and, of yeah. everything that you're doing in procurement from now. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. Well, thanks for joining us, Joe.